in the vast history of human civilization. Few stories rival the magnificence and the depth of Bharat's history and the profound teachings of Sanatan Dharma. Nestled among the cradle of ancient civilizations, Bharat has been the crucible of spiritual evolution, nurturing profound philosophies and timeless traditions that continue to shape the ethos of humanity. At the heart of Bharat's cultural landscape stands its temples, architectural marvels that serve as sanctuaries of faith and devotion. These sacred structures, adorned with intricate carvings and towering tops, bear witness to the enduring legacy of Sanatana Dharma. They are not merely places of worship, but living embodiments of cosmic principles, where seekers of truth find comfort and unity with the Divine. Among these temples, the Rudra Mahalaya stands as an epitome of architectural grandeur and spiritual sanctity. Nestled among the fertile plains of Gujarat, this magnificent temple was built during the rule of Solanki dynasty in the 11th century. With its beautiful craftsmanship and celestial aesthetics, the Rudra Mahalaya temple, also referred to as Rudramal, stands as a testament to ancient Hindu architecture in Siddhapur, within the Patan district of Gujarat, India. Its inception dates back to 943 CE, when construction commenced under the patronage of Mularaja. However, it wasn't until 1140 CE that the temple complex was completed under the rule of Jayasim Siddharaja, a prominent figure of Chalukya dynasty. Tragically, the temple fell victim to the destruction at the hands of Islamic rulers. Initially ravaged by the Sultan of Delhi Alauddin Khalji, it faced further desecration and substantial demolition by Ahmad Shah, the Sultan of Gujarat from 1410 to 1444. Portions of the temple were repurposed into what is now known as the Jami Masjid, the city's congregational mosque. Long ago, Siddhapur was called Sthristala. Later, it was named as Siddhapur to honor Siddharaja Jay Simha. He is remembered for finishing the Rudra Mahadeva temple in the 12th century. According to Puranas, Sri Stala holds the highest reverence within the Saraswata Mandala of Gujarat. The Bhagavata Purana links it closely with Kardamarishi, who established his ashram here, and with Kapilamuni, whose birthplace was believed to be along the sacred Saraswati River. Originally known as Vindusara, it later became famous as Anahila Pataka or Anahila Patana, which is now called Patan, was constructed in the year 745 by Vanaraja, the founder of Chavadkata or Chavda dynasty. However, its golden age came during the rule of Jai Simha from 1094 to 1143, the most prominent leader of the Chalukya or Solanki dynasty in Gujarat. Jai Simha held a deep respect for Sri Stala and frequently visited to be among the sages and saints who resided there. Legend has it that Jai Simha defeated and subdued Barbara, a demon troubling the holy man in Sthala. Barbara then became his royal servant, performing extraordinary feats. This earned Jai Simha the nickname Siddharaja. He erected a temple dedicated to Rudra Mahakala in Sthala which came to be known as Rudra Mahalaya in the year 1140. The Rudra Mahalaya is described as the most magnificent temple dedicated to Shiva. Today, only a few remnants remain, including four pillars on the northern side and five on the eastern side, along with the parts of three-tied mandapa. Additionally, four pillars at the rear, a torana and a cell remain in place after being dismantled in the 13th century. The temple's pillars are said to be the tallest known in Gujarat. Adjacent shrines, possibly 11 in total, some of which were later converted into the Jami Mosque during the Mughal period, likely form part of a grand design dedicated to Ekadasharudras. Despite its former grandeur, 
it is challenging to imagine how Rudra Mahalaya appeared when it stood intact. No similar structure has survived, leaving us only with the legendary accounts like Nine Asis, which detail how Rudra Mahalaya was conceived and built. A poem by Lalla Bhatta describes the Rudra Mahalaya. Fourteen towering stories pierce the sky, supported by seven thousand pillars. In the endless rows adorned with eighteen hundred statues sparkling with emeralds, it boasts thirty thousand flagstaffs intricately carved with golden leaves. Seven thousand sculptured elephants and horses stand in respect to Rudra. Jaisimha's creation, a temple that incites envy among the emperors, sculpted elephants and lions trumpet and roar, echoing all around. Golden kalashas gleam atop the mandapa held by countless pillars. The statues seem to sing and dance and cast their eyes about. Even the gods cannot contain their joy, blowing their conscience. The divine dance enraptured the audience of gods and humans alike. The description of Rudra Mahalaya from Gujarat poem depicts its former glory. According to the song, the temple was said to be adorned with gold, embellished with 1600 columns, adorned with carved screens and intricate lattices, and adorned with pearls, gems, rubies and diamonds. The colossal fragments provide evidence of the temple's impressive design. These fragments include groups of columns from pillared mandapa, which likely spanned multiple stories and featured three entrance porticos. The surviving foundations suggest that the temple covered an area of nearly 300 feet. Additionally, there was Kirti Torana structure in front of which one column still stands. From its dimensions, the Rudra Mahalaya appeared to have been one of the largest architectural undertakings in the region. After two centuries of grandeur, it was during the reign of Ahmad Shah I, the Sultan of Gujarat from 1411 to 1443, the Rudra Mahalaya temple was destroyed and a mosque was built in its place. After returning to Ahmedabad, Ahmad led a campaign to Siddhapur a significant pilgrimage center in northern Gujarat, which was adorned with numerous beautiful temples, some of which were destroyed. Ahmad Shah I was known for his intolerance towards Hindu temples and actively sought opportunities to demolish them. In 1414, he appointed Tajul Mulk to destroy all the temples in Gujarat and establish Muslim authority. This campaign, according to Farish Shah, was carried out meticulously, resulting in the disappearance of Hindu zamindars from the kingdom. The following year, Ahmad Shah I targeted Siddhapur, where he vandalized the images of the revered Rudra Mahalaya temple and repurposed into a mosque. A poetic narrative of Ahmad Shah's action in Siddhapur is found in Mirati Sikandari, The History of Gujarat authored by Sikandar bin Muhammad. The historian recounts Ahmad's expedition to Siddhapur in August 1415 with the aim of demolishing temples that house idols made of gold and silver. The narrative clearly mentions that, under what seemed divine guidance, Ahmad Shah marched to Siddhapur for a mission to demolish temples of the infidels and extinguish the cursed fire worshippers abode. A populous place famed across the lands, the native land of the cursed infidels, with foundations set in sturdy stone, adorned with designs akin with celestial art, doors of sandalwood and fragrant foot, adorned with rings of precious gold, floors gleaning with polished marble, reflecting like mirrors the grandeur within. Fumes of incense filling the air, with chamfer candles lighting the space. Every corner graced with arches, golden chandeliers dangling from each. Inside, silver idols stood tall, outshining those of distant lands. Such was this famed ancient shrine, known far and wide across the globe. 
Ahmad's effort faded from idol's grasp, breaking the hearts of their worshippers. Mosques were raised, pulpits installed, from where Muhammad's law accord. In place of idols and their makers, imams, callers to prayer and preachers took stand. Ahmad's grace transformed this place from an idol's home to Allah's abode. Ahmad Shah finalized the destruction of Rudra Mahalaya. Parts of it were reused for setting up a new congregational mosque. And afterward, there is scarce mention of Siddhapur until the monsoon season of 1573. During this period, Abul Fazl describes it as still being a significant place of religious pilgrimage. The desolation of Hindu temples turned into mosques by the hands of many Muslim rulers in medieval India echo a painful history. Yet, within this sorrow, the destruction and transformation of Rudra Mahalaya strike a particularly emotional chord. Its creator, Siddharaja Jayasimha, earned the respect of Muslims as a defender of their sacred spaces in Gujarat. This serves as a stark reminder of the one-sided nature of tolerance and coexistence in such circumstances. It's heart-trending to note that numerous Hindu rulers extended protection to their Muslim subjects, evidenced by the flourishing Muslim communities and their places of worship in towns across Western, Southwestern and Northern India long before they fell to the onslaught of Islamic invaders. This truth casts a somber shadow, emphasizing the unequal burden borne by those who championed harmony and respect amidst the tide of history. Though the physical structures may have crumbled, the spirit of Rudra Mahalaya endures, resilient and eternal. Even if we cannot resurrect these temples to their former glory, we can at least ensure that their memory remains alive in the collective consciousness of our society. In the silent ruins of temples like Rudra Mahalaya, we find more than crumbling stone and faded inscriptions. We uncover the silent witness to the valor and sacrifice of countless generations who stood as guardians of Sanatana Dharma, the eternal essence of Bharat.